So here's an old joke my mom told me one time. Once, there was an ambitious young noble who wished to become king. To this end, he sought out the aid of a powerful fortune teller at the top of a mountain. The fortune teller presented the noble with a bundle of sticks, each with a number written on it. He instructed the noble to draw a stick. The noble did as instructed, producing from the bundle of sticks presented to him the number 10. The fortune teller turned to him grimly. You will never become king, he said, for you have not the support of heaven, nor the support of earth. So, did you get the joke? Trick question. Of course you didn't, because this joke is not in English. So let's try this again. Here is the Chinese character for 10. Here is the Chinese character for king. The fortune teller says, You will never become king, for you have not the support of heaven, nor the support of earth. So anyway, back to Genshin Impact. As you probably know, Genshin is not a game that was originally written in English, and if you didn't know that, how the fuck didn't you know that? What the fuck? Do you live under a rock? Do you live under a fucking rock? How are you watching YouTube? Does your rock have Wi-Fi? Can you let me under the rock with you? Honestly, I'm begging here because I don't know if you've taken a look around outside recently, but translation and how to do it properly has been a raging question in the minds of Anglosphere enjoyers of non-Anglosphere media since time immemorial. My first introduction to the debate was the anime community, which is, as we all know, always a bastion of rational, well thought out, and healthy discussion. Now, while I was always sort of conceptually aware of the debate raging around me, I mostly stayed out of it. I didn't do any translation work, I don't speak Japanese, and also, I was like 12. But with Genshin Impact, I feel like it's finally my time to toss my hat in the ring. If you weren't able to guess by the fact that my mom's joke was in Chinese, I am what the kids like to call an ABC. And while my Chinese is by most definitions utter dog water, it is in fact better than the Chinese of most people who play Genshin in English. Which is to say that you probably do not speak Chinese. Unless you do, in which case, please don't laugh at my Chinese. But if you don't speak Chinese, then what's on you fucking my, you little bitch? So in translating a game like Genshin, the first thing you have to contend with is all the shit you don't have to bother translating. Now, I realize that sounds pretty counterintuitive. Obviously, Genshin is in Chinese. If you don't translate the word, then we, as a bunch of dirty English speakers, are not going to know what the words mean. And to that I have to say, that's the fucking point. There are plenty of situations where the actual meaning of the characters on the screen is not the point. We don't need to know that Xing Chou's name means the progression of autumn, just like we don't need to know that Jessica means God beholds in Hebrew. That's not important, Jessica! What's more important in these cases is pronunciation. You gotta get the Englishers to say something at least vaguely proximal to how the word is actually supposed to be pronounced in Chinese. This might not sound that complicated on the surface. English is a phonetic language, so in theory, you should be able to just sort of spell out how it sounds with English letters, and that should get you at least close. But there are a few wrinkles. Any system that tries to get English speakers to say Chinese words has to account for the fact that there are sounds in Chinese that just kind of don't exist in English. So what do you do? Do you just smash the distinct Chinese sounds into their closest English equivalents? Do you just give them English names? that sound vaguely similar? Do you say fuck it and just leave the Chinese characters in there? Genshin has the benefit of being not the first people to face this problem. There are already several pre-existing systems in place to write out Chinese words using the Roman alphabet. Genshin defaults to the pinyin system of pronunciation, which is, as far as I can tell anyway, the most popular and standard system in the English-speaking world. The UN and ISO adopted it as a global standard, it's used on basically all the maps, and it's the one that I learned growing up. There are other systems out there, but pinyin is far and away the most widely used one. And pinyin is, in a lot of ways, a pretty elegant system. It's very consistent. If you know the pinyin system and you see some pinyin written out, you will always be able to pronounce those words correctly. Whereas with standard English, you can know the alphabet all you want, girl. It's a fucking crapshoot out here. But there are some problems, especially if you're just a lay English speaker who isn't familiar with pinyin. Remember that there are sounds that exist in Chinese that just kind of don't exist in English. Pinyin's way of dealing with this was to just steal some letters that they weren't really using for anything and assigning them to those sounds, which is how you get absolutely buckwild things like the Qingxin flower, which to an English speaker is pronounced absolutely nothing like what any of those letters are supposed to be pronounced like, and what is that Q doing without a U? Now, you might be listening to this and thinking, isn't there a better way of romanizing Chinese words for English speakers? To which the answer is, not really. The Roman alphabet wasn't built for Chinese pronunciation. Any system trying to bring Chinese pronunciations into the confines of the Roman alphabet is inevitably going to have to make some concessions. It's a matter of where, not if. And like I said earlier, pinyin is basically the global standard. There are a lot of people who know the pinyin system, and any deviation from it risks confusing all of them, me included. As a fun contemporary example, the recent release of Marvel's Shang-Chi confused and alarmed me. The character of Shang-Chi was created in 1973, before the UN adopted pinyin as a global system in 19. 
1986. So when they romanized Shang-Chi's name, they didn't use the pinyin system of pronunciation, which is very obvious to me, because if we're using pinyin, then this looks like it should be pronounced Shang-Chi. If you were to use pinyin to romanize the actual Chinese characters Shang-Chi, you'd spell it like this, with a Q, like in Chi-Chi's name. And to their credit, I do kinda see why they didn't change it. It's been spelled this way for like 40 years, and if they spelled it Shang-Chi with a Q, then no one would've been able to pronounce it. Except no one pronounced it right anyway, they all said Shang-Chi. They even made a joke about that in a movie that I'm not gonna play so I don't get DMZ'd. Also, fun side note, while I was confusedly googling around for how to pronounce Shang-Chi, I stumbled across this GamesRadar article by Michael Doran, which is just fucking hilarious, I have to talk about it here. Okay, so Mr. Michael, GamesRadar journalist who worked at Marvel or whatever, let me help you out here. The Shang and Shang-Chi is supposed to rhyme with the Shang in Shanghai. You are just also mispronouncing Shanghai. If there are any journalists who are watching this for some godforsaken reason and you're gonna write an article on how to pronounce Chinese words, please, I'm literally begging you, please just talk to one Chinese person. Just one. This is like the top non-video result when you Google it. I am going to scream. Anyway, point is, it sounds like we have a solution, flawed as it is. And for any non-pinyin knowers, if you want to know my shitty idiot's 30 second guide to pinyin pronunciation, an X is a sh sound, a Q is a ch sound, a C is a tss sound, a ZH is a j sound, and as for the vowels, just do your best. Watch Ying's video. Don't ask me. My Chinese is dog water. I unironically thought Tian Chou meant heaven's balls for a second there. Anyway, solution. We have our Romanized pronunciations. So what do we do about the actual meanings of the word? There's this raging debate in the anime community about translation versus localization. This debate has been going on for probably longer than I've been alive, I doubt I can cover the nuances of all of it in a single video, and I honestly don't want to. There's a great video by Redbard that I'll link in the description if you want to get more into that, but to sum it all up in case you don't, most people are using the terms wrong, and basically all translations are going to have some localization. Again, a question of when, not if, and to what extent. Genshin is no exception to this rule. The most prominent example of localization that I can think of is Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi is, as we all know, a zombie, which I I find pretty interesting, because she's actually not a zombie at all. She's pretty clearly a jiangshi, a mythical undead creature prominent in Chinese culture. Of course, ask the average American what a jiangshi is, and they'll say gesundheit, so adaptation will change, Chi Chi's a zombie now. What I find particularly interesting about this is that if you google the word jiangshi right now, the literal first sentence of the Wikipedia page about them actually calls them vampires. Which begs the question, why a zombie for Chi Chi? And well, obviously I don't know what goes down in the translation room for Genshin, but if I had to hazard a wild guess, I'd say it came down to how Chi Chi in particular is characterized. The term vampire in the Anglosphere is pretty loaded, for lack of a better word. It comes pre-packaged with a lot of preconceptions. People are going to make a lot of assumptions about a character if they hear that that character is a vampire. And while Jiangshi are typically characterized as bloodsuckers, Chi Chi isn't, and she doesn't really fit any of the other preconceived notions of what a vampire should be. So how is Chi Chi characterized? Well, she suffers from rigor mortis, which makes her body stiff, her memory is pretty shitty, and she speaks in slow, slightly broken sentences. And it just so happens that in English, we have an appropriately undead mythological creature that fits all of these criteria. Of course, things don't always work out that way. Another adaptational change they made was this NPC from Hu Tao's Story Quest. In Chinese, he's called Lang Ge. Now, this might not sound like that big of a deal. Like I said earlier, most names in Genshin are translated phonetically using the pinyin system. The problem here is that this character's name is actually a joke of sorts. Lang Ge is pretty clearly a nickname, and it contains the character Ge, which is a suffix that suggests that he's older than all of his friends, but he's actually still younger than them all, because he's dead which is a great joke. I probably should not have used the word joke. So the translators decided that to try to preserve the meaning, they would translate his name as Big G, which, eh. English doesn't really have a lot of nicknames with meanings denoting relative age. I mean, it does, but most of them are pejorative, and most of them denote an age far greater than Big G's here. You want something that suggests both friendliness and that the person that you are addressing is just slightly older than you, which, in English, doesn't exist. There isn't a word for that. There isn't a good translation here. And this is where the more controversial aspects of localization come into play. If you want this joke to work in English, you are going to need to make some more drastic changes, otherwise you lose the inherent underlying meaning. And that's the thing. Sometimes Genshin just doesn't do that. So as with most matters involving language, where, when, and how adaptational changes need to be made is largely subjective. In addition, because the goal is to preserve the underlying meaning of the text, the translator's interpretation of what the text actually means matters a great deal here. And this is where the aforementioned anime controversy comes into play. A lot of people in the translation, not localization camp hear this, and they think that what's happening here is that a translator is coming in and substituting their own opinions and beliefs and values for that of the original author, corrupting the meaning of the work in the process. And to their credit, this is kinda true. While the 
The goal of any good translation should be to preserve the underlying meaning of the text. Interpreting texts like at all is a subjective matter and the biases of the translators are inevitably going to crop up. But this is pretty unavoidable, because if you don't do this, if you stick strictly to the denotative meanings of words and ignore the meaning suggested by the connotative, you get utter nonsense like that joke I explained at the beginning of this video. So while Genshin normally gets the denotative meanings of words down pat, the connotative meanings often get lost. Not always. To its credit, there are a lot of good examples of Genshin doing a fairly decent job at localization. Take Zhongli's lines. A lot of Zhongli's combat lines are written in Chengyu, which is a traditional Chinese idiomatic expression that typically consists of four characters and are hard for me to understand. Fuck you, Zhongli. Luckily, someone on Reddit translated them all for me, so shout out to Matrix C7 on Reddit. I'll link his post in the description below. Check it out. Lots of cool information on Zhongli's connections to traditional Chinese culture. So here is a direct, literal word-for-word -word translation of Zhongli's line. At first glance, we can already tell that the originally four-syllable phrase is ballooned into a lot more than four syllables, which is a bit of a problem. Combat lines are supposed to be quick and snappy, especially burst lines that need to finish before the burst animation ends, and while Zhongli's burst animation is long, it's not that long. Also, the meaning here is a little bit muddled. So first things first, if we want a good translation, we're gonna need an interpretation of what this idiom actually means. So a bit of confusion about the word 10,000 here. The two words one xiang together is an idiom that's generally understood to mean all things on earth, and a direct word for word translation doesn't quite capture that, so we'll go ahead and switch out that meaning. All right, that's a little more clear. Heaven moves all things. Heaven is powerful enough to affect all the world. All things must abide by heaven. Hmm. But remember that within the world of Genshin, Zhongli is a god. He is the arbiter of the heavens. It's more than reasonable that by heaven, he could be referring to himself here. So all things must abide by the will of Zhongli. Have you guessed it yet? I will have order. So in my opinion, this is a pretty good translation. It's quick and snappy, it preserves the original meaning of the idiom reasonably well, and it even sounds kind of regal and dignified, which fits well for a character like Zhongli. It's not quite perfect. The original sounds a lot more poetic to my ears, but whatever, we can't have everything. And anyway, Zhongli's a pretty verbose guy. We get to learn about his poetic nature every single goddamn time we open the fucking character menu. Osmanthus one. Unfortunately, not everything in Genshin got the same level of polish that Zhongli's voice lines were shown. For a fun small example, I spied this Twitter thread over here by someone who was confused because in English, Zhongli apparently walks birds? So what happened here is that in Chinese, it's quite traditional for mostly older men to keep birds as pets and take them on walks around the city. This practice is called liu niao, which literally translates to walk in a bird. They just translated the term literally without considering the cultural connotation surrounding the term. The problem is that while bird walking has a lot of cultural connotations for an elderly gentleman in Chinese, in English, it's- Bro, You're walking a fucking ostrich, you daft cunt! <laughs> and this inconsistent application of localization tends to have some spiraling effects. The story of Genshin is, of course, a fucking story, it's interconnected. Changes to one part of the story are going to require further changes to preserve the meaning. For example, in Zhongli's second story quest, there's this interesting moment where Quin Jun and Zhou say a few lines of poetry to each other, and I want to talk about the translation here. In fact, eagle-eyed viewers may have already spotted the particular issue that caught my eye. That's Zhongli's burst line, except this time it's been translated directly. So with this information in hand, the original meaning in Chinese becomes incredibly clear. Quin Chun begins the exchange, recites the first two lines of poetry, but it's Jiu who finishes it. That's really significant, it tells us a lot about what's going on here. Even in his corrupted, decayed state, as deformed as he is now, in his core, deep down, Ejdaha remembers the words of Morax, his beloved and cherished friend. And then meanwhile in English, they're just saying some random meaningless vague poetry to each other. Because of the way Genshin was translated, we don't recognize the lines as being from Zhongli. The underlying meaning of the exchange is lost, even if the denotative meaning of the words is technically correct. And look, Genshin is honestly a pretty hard-looking game to try to translate. I don't envy the translator their job. A little bit of nuance lost in a few places is unavoidable, honestly, but there are some places where Genshin's translation just completely falls apart, like Beidou's Hangout event, for example, and... <sighs> Look, I would love to break down what's going on in Beidou's Hangout event for you, but the truth is, the translation mangled it so fucking badly that even I have no fucking clue what's going on. So Beidou's named after the Big Dipper, which in Chinese is called Beidou, which, yeah, great, except in Chinese, rather than Big and Little Dipper, they're actually called the North and South Dipper, with Bei being North, so Beidou is actually the North Dipper. Great. Beidou's backstory is that she's an orphan who washed up along the shore of a kinda poor fishing village that was called Down River because they came from a place called Up River, and as soon as she 
she arrived, a dog died, which I guess is a bad omen. And then the village chief died, and all the fucking fish died, and the village got fucked, and they blamed Beto and chased her out, because apparently the South Dipper controls life, and the North Dipper controls death. And the Alcor, which is one of the stars in the Big Dipper, is an omen of death or something. And that's why all the villagers blame Beto? Because she's named after that constellation? If you speak fluent Chinese, please help me. What the fuck does Beto's hangout event mean? Why is the Alcor cursed? Why does the Little Dipper control life? What do these sentences mean? I have the reading comprehension of a toddler, and my brain is pee pee small and small. So let's take a bit of a step back. To a lot of people, localization is a loaded term with a lot of negative connotations, most of them stemming from, as far as I can tell anyway, four kids dubs and that one time Sailor Moon censored something, I think. Translation and localization are tools of a trade, and like any tools, they can be misused, such as in the aforementioned examples. But anime localization in the early 90s was a burgeoning art without anything to go off of. To put it bluntly, they had no clue what they were doing. The art of how to translate Eastern media for mass consumption by a Western audience has come a long way, and to dismiss all localization efforts outright as dirty conniving translators perverting a message because they hate free speech is a mischaracterization. Sometimes localization is necessary to preserve meaning and context. And yeah, there is a place for meaningful discussion here. Like I said, adaptation and how to do it correctly is largely subjective. A lot of translated books contain a foreword written by the translator that explains their method of translation, what they were trying to accomplish, why they made the decisions they did, and I think that sort of transparency is admirable. It lessens the chance that the reader will be getting a distorted version of the original work, and it establishes a bridge through which the reader can learn about the original cultural context of the work. And that's honestly one of the things that originally drew me to Genshin. I grew up in a part of the US where there aren't a lot of Chinese people. China and its culture were completely immaterial to all the people around me. So to see a piece of media like Genshin that's steeped in Chinese culture achieve such success in America is honestly shocking to me. To see the genuine interest that players have for the culture and customs of China, it means a lot. But ultimately, Genshin is a video game with a narrative, and if if English players want to experience that narrative fully, it has to be translated properly for them. So with all that in mind, let's try this one more time. The noble did as instructed, producing from the bundle of sticks presented to him the number 2, and then a 4, a 6, an 8. The fortune teller turned to him grimly. Even as you struggle mightily, he said, the odds are against you.